Well, welcome back to another episode of Football with Ben Roethlisberger. My name is Spence, and as always, I am joined here with two-time Super Bowl champion Ben Roethlisberger. There he is. It's me. Hey. Sorry if we guys hear a lot of noise. My kids are very heavy-footed walkers. <laughs> They're upstairs like, like, I tell my kids all the time, you're 10, 9, and 7. How are you so heavy? Like, it's heels. Like, why are they? Oh, Got oh, the old left foot. Yes. Yep. Who walks heel toe when you walk just around the house? I mean, I, mean, I understand, but have it put it down softly. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what's funny? Put it, it down softly. So my daughter is, is right over there. Yes, taking well, a nap, sleeping. Yes, yeah, she's my, not just like over there. She's yeah, sleeping. she's not just hanging out. She's taking a nap. Two year old daughter taking a nap, and um, the doorbell chimed when when um I was in there like d- yeah, yeah. doing that, and uh, it chimed again right before we started filming because our special Jess guest got here, right? Jess, guest got here, right? Yeah. And uh, I thought she was going to wake up. Did it ring in that room? Did it ring in the room? It did ring in the room, but um, oh, she's a champ. There's someone's in trouble. Yeah, she's a champ. Um, she went back to sleep soundly. Oh, good. So, um, but it was exciting. I yeah, I was I was not upset that the that the that the ch- it chimed. Okay. I was more excited because of who showed up. Oh, for episode number thirty six. This is the thirty sixth episode we've Which ever done. Which is just coincidence. What do you mean? We didn't plan. We planned this. <laughs> we, if we were only that good. People, we're not that good. People who watch the show know that we are very intentional about everything we do on this show. Okay. Oh yeah, super intentional. Well, it, um, this has been one that's been asked about and asked for for a long time. We've been stood up a few times um, by this guest. We've been gold. We call it gold jacketed. Um, we, different, we've different we, rules for them. I know, and yep. that's okay. I've accepted that. Um, and so I'm just I'm through the roof excited to have um, my dear friend and teammate. The Hall of Famer, the great number 36, Jerome Bennett. There he is. In the flesh. First He's of actually, all. Wait, first is that green screen? All. Is he here? Yeah, first <laughs> of all. <laughs> first of all, um, no stood up. No, absolutely. We were just working on a a functional time. You want to be a 36th sense. episode. That's so all. you were waiting for it. I, I, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's right. Why would I have been the 34th episode? That's right? That doesn't point. make sense. So true. That's a great point. 36th episode. It just makes all the sense in the world. But, but I will say... I do have to, we got to get something clear because I have the birdies and people that have been watching. uh, We have millions and millions and millions of fans around the world. This farce that you are doing (laughs) have have told me that you and Coach Cower, right, the two people I hold in high esteem just just blitzed me. No. Like zone blitzed me. Like came from this side, two from this side. (laughs) And then two from the unbelievable. I can't believe that you guys actually hammered me like that. Y'all got here. Y'all was drinking some drinks and y'all was just talking the shit word. And y'all were just banging on me. Spence, can we confirm it? And I don't know about this. We, uh, I'll go back and check. And if so, you know what? If I saw, you know, you didn't have that commercial throw the flag and (laughs) we want the challenge flag, the challenge (laughs) flag, and we want the replay. Uh, I can't believe I I, see it. Hey, fans, our millions and millions of fans around the world, yeah, thank you, Uh, yeah, because you're the reason that he's here, yeah, right. You guys grilled him, you sent him all kinds of tweets or X's or whatever it is, and all that stuff, and you got him here. So, fans, this one's for you, yes, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, well done. I kept, like I said, my I kept my hands clean in this situation. Uh-huh. This man is a legend. Well, I appreciate you keeping your hands clean. This is this one. He's got shit on his hands. <laughs> clearly, yeah, wow, clearly because so of what what you and I'm when I when I catch up with Coach, <laughs> I'm gonna let Coach know he not he 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 has exactly. not been let go. He's not. He's. Uh-oh. I will make note of it. I will, I, I'm gonna I'm get him too. We gotta do um, re, the reunion show. Yeah. 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 Reunion. Yeah. Reunion. Yeah. Yeah. Reunion. Yeah. My we, ass. Could, we could have yeah. Coach on here. Yep. And That's then right. Jerome come in like have him, like, you know we still haven't had Jerome on here and have have Jerome come right behind. Right. Because he go as soon as you say we still haven't had Jerome he gonna be like oh rah, 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 talking shit. He gonna say something and I'm gonna be right there to catch it like oh Coach oh so tell me how you really feel. <laughs> So tell me how you really feel, Coach. <laughs> well, well, we're just we are so thankful that you're here, um, and you're here because you filmed your show, right? You're, you told I me did, eight, I, this is your 18th year, my doing 18th that show. season, the Jerome Better Show, yeah, in, which is in crazy. Time. It's and crazy. So we we're, we happened to we actually caught we crossed paths like last week at the airport, yeah, 
And um, it was like, you, we, I like saw him, I'm like, drone, drop that. And we, we went and saw each other, said, hey. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, I'm going to be in town. And we we'll made it show. work. We made it we work. We made it work. You made it work. Thank you. And we made it work. I knew that you you reached out to me a while ago and said, hey, could I do it? And I said, and this was during the off season. And I said, I'm right. going to be coming every week in town. Right. So we'll figure you do out when. Every week? Like I do it every week. week. I fly in every week wow. and do the show and then fly back home to Atlanta. That's um, awesome. Yeah. Do but you have a guest on it? it, it I don't. No I guests. don't. I don't have any guests on it. But Did you used to? We you will no, no. We, we no. We used to have on the on a different show. This uh, this was the show that I did with KDKA mm. with with the Steelers. I got you. So we used to have people come on every week, and and it was more of a variety show, uh, fun show, not talking about the still the game. So now it's more like so a, now this is more we talk about. Stuff. I got you. Yeah, we talk about game breakers. Oh, we, we talk about the other team games. and that kind of thing. So so you're much you different. Preview today's show previewing is previewing the Raider game coming. The up. Raider game. On, so you, on, you look on back Sunday. a little bit and then talk forward. Yeah, we 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 look back a little bit on the last game and just just very very. Uh, just a quick uh, recap. Yeah, and then very on. quick recap. Talk about it, and then we move on. The focus is really on the next week, and yeah. and, and and who who to look for because the key is what I like to do is give the fans something to look for in the game to know kind of yeah, yeah, what they're yeah. looking at, right? If so, the, you know, this game was Max Crosby. I told him, look at Max Crosby. Yeah. If we can block him, we can have a really good day. Mm -hmm. If we can't block him. We got hell to so, pay. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's one of those. It's real simple. <laughs> you know. You know why? You know one of the reasons why he is such a good player because he's from the Mac. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> the Mac. Yeah, <laughs> people don't even know what that is. <laughs> They're talking about he he went to McDonald's. What is that? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's what I'm saying. You guys don't even have he, a conference. He's from the Mac. He doesn't even have a conference. We too good for a conference. What conference y'all in? Every conference. Every conference. We play everybody. What do you mean? Uh, well, you play everybody. Yeah. You guys have a big one this week, don't you? Yeah. Ohio we State? play Ohio State this week. Yeah. Let me in. What you need him in for? It's a tough one. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about this. Mm. With, with their star studded squad last year, we still played them tough, right? At their place. So you're into moral victories? No. That, you're not listening <laughs> to what I'm saying. You're okay. not listening to what I'm saying. Okay. I said we played them tough, we lost, right? Yeah. Now they come to our place mm -hmm. with a much less experienced team. Yeah. Okay? Okay. And this year we have the experience at the quarterback position as opposed to them having the experience a year before. Is it like and a noon kickoff? Like, don't you guys kick off 7 30, baby? Oh, it's a PM prime, prime time. They want you to look at it. It's a Ben Roethlisberger prime time. It's like 7 30. We want you to see it. Okay. That's I'll, why they do it. I'll tune in. What you mean we don't get much of those? Yes, we do. You guys are always noon or it's noon. With, it's always 3 30. 3.30. Because we well, have our own, our well, own are barbecuing deal. Our back and stuff. So we don't go at noon. Yeah. Most school, No, no, no. We go 3.30 because we have our own time slot. How often do you get back? Do you go to games often? So, great question. I, before this year, it was always one game, maybe two. This year, my daughter is a freshman at Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. And now my wife is like, wants to go to Notre Dame every weekend. So <laughs> literally like every week, I'm like, okay. babe, we have to let her assimilate. Yeah, let, yeah. Get her, let, let her breathe a little. Yeah, go, she got to okay. get some friends. You yeah. cannot be her only friend. You know, so <laughs> she going to kill me too. She's like, what? I'm not the, <laughs> what I'm saying? That's the, that's just, you know. Uh, so w we've gone to the first game okay. of, this, of the season, Tennessee State. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a really great game because Eddie George is a, is a really close friend of mine. He was the head coach there, oh, so at Tennessee that. State, and it was a great opportunity to to see that and and also see my daughter who who had just been uh, dropped off to, at school maybe two weeks before. So my wife was so looking forward to that one, and then now it's about another two or three weeks later. We're going back to. Uh, to this big game, but it's also a double-edged scenario because my son is also being recruited by Notre Dame, mm. and so they've offered him a scholarship to play, and so he's going. He's going as a recruit this week. This weekend. This weekend. Oh, so, nice. so we. So I'm going as the father of, and it's funny because on the on all the information they give you. It's, it says parent of Jerome Bettis Jr. And I'm like, I'm not a parent. 
I'm Jerome. I'm Jerome too, right? You know, it was like parent of. It's like yeah. I'm not. A, I'm not the the, the plus one. <laughs> yes, you are. Now you are. I'm the plus one. Now you are. So it's like Deal it's so it, crazy. <laughs> and and so this is um, kind of his weekend awesome. in in a way. So it's crazy. It's it's a crazy dynamic. And because of the rules. There's only certain things I can do as a dad. I I can't. I'm not there as a former oh, player, so I can like I gotta like be you know strict and where I can go, where I can't go. Because you're going really so because even, I'm going as a recruit. Mm, the plus one parent. The plus one. I'm not going as John Betta's former yeah. Notre Dame just, player. Da, 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 wow. da. So show up in your gold jacket and see what they. Yeah, they I know, out. right? <laughs> I, I want to say. I, I just want to just say, hey, hey listen. <laughs> What do you see here? Hey, what that's that play. is really really cool. Does, Very um, unique. What what position is he playing? Wide receiver. Okay. Yeah. So he's six three. Big where, old. Where did dude. that come from? It came. Uh, so <laughs> here's the thing. I tell people all the time. I went this way. He went that way. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I'm not afraid to say it. I, it is what it is. Um, but my my wife's father, uh, got got rest his soul. He was six. Three and a half, okay. six four, so six the, four. The height, so the height came from my wife's side, oh, luckily. My that's so I'm glad he didn't get it. Get it, my side. What's his What's his game like? Good hands, speed, a little bit so, of everything. So what's he's yeah, he's got he got great hands. He's a um a true X receiver. You know, okay. he's a you know a six. You know, if I look, can think about it, bit. he can run. Yeah. He's got, he's got that, that okay. speed. He's, he's not, he's not the, the, the in and out the quick shifty, guy, yeah. the shifty he's guy. Going, going. Yeah, he's got, he got good speed, um, great hands. I mean, that's awesome. Jump balls, all those, all his, and and you know, that's really cool. Can do it. Also, it's fun to to like be dad and watch. Yeah. you know what I mean. And then now he's getting recruited. Me having been recruited, kind of knowing mm -hmm. what to do here, what to do here, it's I'm kind of so helping. It's so much different, though, isn't it? It's, it's, I mean, it's night and day different. Like I'm not, I'm not doing it, but I hear about it. Yeah, it's it night and day like different. It's, it's night and day roof. different. It is. Yeah. I mean, Alabama, they, I mean, they're sending me, they texting me, and I'm thinking to myself, you're not recruiting me. Yeah, you recruiting him, but but they got, but, the they got too, you right? got to recruit the parent too, and so it's so much different. Whereas do they try to play day, the they games, don't. they play the games with you, and you're like, listen, I'm too slick for this. Like you can't, you can't, you can't get me on this one. Like I, I, well, I don't try and sell. They have it. They, no, they well, they, they just send they just send the information, and it's all you know. Just and they say you know they've got 37 team captains, you know that kind of stuff, yeah. right? And, and and it's and it's, hmm. it's it's geared so you see the NFL potential. Yeah. Right. I so I get that part, and I know what they're. What the, what the attraction is, but but as a dad, I'm saying, think about this. We play. How old were you when you retired? Thirty nine. You were thirty nine, right? You are one hundred percent the exception to the every rule. Uh, you old sucker, <laughs> you know. But but normal people <laughs> outside of the truly 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 special quarterbacks. Yes, you guys are the only position that can freaking play the forty. Right? Yeah. Every everybody else plays the thirty. Um, but but usually you retire, you thirty, and you know. Let's say you play, you have a great career. You have to play ten years. Yeah. It's a great NFL career. Um, for most, you still 32, 33 years mm. old. Right? What are you going to do? Life. And, and so, so I always say, even if you have a great career, you still have another another stage, another chapter of your life. Mm. And so, at the academic side, is important. Um, and and so, just to try to to bring that part aspect in because you know you want guys to look at it like yeah i get it you you know football 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 mm -hmm. but football will end for, sure. for all of us all right of us, yep. and you got to have something else that you want to do uh with with your life well i think i want to i want to follow back because i want to i want to yeah. talk with your daughter but i want to i want to yeah. follow up with this because yeah. it's, you and i are very similar in that that mm -hmm. we both went back to school mm. right because you and, and i don't know if yeah. not everyone may not know this but like i went back 13 years after and got my degree, but you just did it that. last yeah. two years ago? I did. Two, I, but Went back the, and got your degree. The problem that at Notre Dame was, at Notre Dame, if you want your degree from Notre Dame, you have to, your senior year classes, you have to take on campus. Mm -hmm. So I literally had to get an apartment <laughs> and, and, and I was commuting yes. so back on campus with like only 20-somethings, right? And 
I'll never forget the funniest thing. I'm in class and everybody, you know, got their computer. I got my computer, but they are and I'm trying to take notes. Right. Everybody else is and I'm like Run that back. What is that? And I'm like, I'm like, hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that. And they look at me like this. Really? This is old man. Really? Like grandpa. They're like, what are you doing? You're actually writing? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> they couldn't believe I was actually writing my notes. They're like, what is that, cursive? They don't even teach I, that anymore. They're like, yeah. are you going to read that? Can you read that? That's so funny. And, and, and so I was a dinosaur, literally a dinosaur yep. back in school. But it was it, it was an amazing experience. And, and I'm, I'm so glad I did it. I, yeah. I didn't know you went Miami back. Tried, they tried to do the same thing, make me come back. And I said, yeah. no, I'll just finish at Pitt. Like, well, let's find okay, a way okay, to okay, work okay. around this. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. you had an advantage. Like, yeah. Do something. No, oh, really? yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, See, I'm Miami good. wanted me to, to be a graduate. That, you, that's like, right. Yeah, right. They were like, well, oh, you want to grad? Yeah, come on. Come on. <laughs> and I was like, so I tried. But you did. That, that's, what's, that's what's awesome. You know what I tried to do, though, which was, was totally legitimate, legitimate, but didn't apply to me. But I was like, you know, COVID, I get, can I get a COVID exemption? <laughs> <laughs> because really they cool. were that was it was available but very very limited and they knew better they were like nah no. nah be uh-uh. <laughs> nah be what get on campus i tried get on campus. i tried <laughs> yeah, i was like nah. you know well. i said i'm asthmatic and <laughs> i'm older and i'm afraid of the, like being on the campus categories. with all these young people and i'm old and i'm like <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know and they were like yeah okay, okay. <laughs> Not okay. Having it. come on Come on over here. Sit down right here. We come got a spot for you right over right here. <laughs> so, yeah. but I did it. I did it. Because what um, what did you go back? Like, what would you get your degree in? Business management. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, see, I don't know about you, but I went and did it because I felt like I couldn't tell my kids how important school was. Because I'd be like, hey, Dad, what's your uh, degree in? Yeah. Shut up. They start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'm going to go back and get it. So, I don't know if that's how, if you felt some kind of that kids. Was, that was a big part of it. That was a big part of it. And, and. The first thing was I promised my mom and dad that I would do it um, back back then. Uh, my father's no longer with us, so my mom. It was one of those things that you know what I said I was going to do it right. I, I always I made this promise. I said I was going to do it, and I had went back uh, two years after after I had left school. So my third year in NFL, mm. I went back and got another semester in. Okay. This was a long time ago. Oh, yeah. So I was chipping out, of, and then when COVID hit. My first semester, I did get mm. uh, to do it at home because, oh, okay. of because of COVID. Yeah. So I was able to get that one. I was trying to get the second semester, and they were like, nah. But it was an opportunity. But more importantly, my kids were of the age where we were trying to uh, explain how important uh, your education right. is right. Why you know and you know they we had them in in, in private school and and my my big. You know, comment to them was, I played football, so you don't have to, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And so my goal is to give you the best education I can afford you, right? And and I think that's every parent's you know obligation to provide their children with the best education that they can afford mm-hmm. them, yeah, right? Yeah. And so, and that yeah. was always the goal, like to get to get them the best education, the best education. So I'm I'm preaching all this, but you know what? I'm not putting it into practice. Mm-hmm. So I said to myself, you know what? I, I, I really, 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 yeah, really need good. to do this. And so it, it was, it actually, it paid off because it was an incredible experience. One that I'll That's never awesome. forget. Yeah. That's cool. I was going to, I want to ask you about your daughter, but I just, did you see yeah. the ESPN alert just came that Trayvon Diggs tore his ACL? The corner, the corner for the, Oh, for Cowboys. Dallas. No, yeah, man. Just, just now you came in. Just came oh, through. that's devastating awful, for them. Um, no, I wanted to, and I'm wow. lightened up, but you're, um, you're talking about your daughter going to Notre Dame. So this is a yeah. two parter. Cause I yeah. feel like we had a small conversation about this. Cause uh-huh. the last time we kind of hung out was down in Florida when, right. When we played golf, when we put yep. a whooping on them, Jaguar boys, whooping on them. Um, uh, <laughs> they don't want to see us again. They don't want to see us again. I don't want to venture off too far, but how cool was it hanging out with Jack Nick? Man, I mean that was, was like that, like a grandpa, was that awesome? like just like oh, it was so cool. It was so. I got cool. these pictures of him like looking at my kids, like and I'm like, that's oh, like yeah. my grandpa. Like you know, they're sitting yeah. breakfast and he's standing behind him, like looking at him and just yeah. like and I'm just like, 
I don't know. Anyway, he and just when, like, you know, like how many opportunities do oh, you get? You special know, like that. With, special like that, right? Um, That's awesome. But we talked. I think we talked briefly at that time about your daughter. Mm, yeah. Potentially, I don't think she was. Or she'd gone to Notre Dame. Or was no. thinking about the time, right? Because she no. was just a freshman. Yeah, she was. <laughs> so my two parter because one of the things we talked about is one: is she going to be ready for the winners? Because I know that was one of the things we talked about. And two, what does she think about her brother being recruited there? Good, good question. So, so the the, the winner part. I know part, this is my thirty six episode. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Trained professional. <laughs> <laughs> my, the winter part is funny because I just asked her. Uh, I think it was She's yesterday. She's in a winter in Atlanta. I, well, <laughs> well, I asked her yesterday. I said, "So how was the experience? I know you were a little lukewarm because initially she was hot and heavy on USC, right? Ooh. Wanted to go to USC, and I was just like devastated. Oh, like, oh, you. That's you're, like your arch right? enemy, right? Arch enemy." And I told her, I said a long time ago, but I was kind of joking, but I kind of wasn't. I said, you know, you can go to USC, but, you know, I'm not paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of I was kind of joking, but I kind of wasn't, but I was. Um, my wife was going to make me pay for it, but I was going right. to. Um, and so I was going to have her write the check because yeah, I, was gonna say, you I didn't want to have my name go to pay anything right to, the to the University of Southern California. I just, I, I just couldn't fathom that. So, um, so, she, so. I asked her, I said, well, you know, how, what, what do you think? Why you she says, well, Dad, I'm enjoying it, but it's not winter yet. Mm. And I've heard about the winter, so I'm, I'm saying I'm enjoying it so far. And I was just like, ooh, uh -oh. <laughs> oh, it's coming. It's coming. It, <laughs> because it's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny because when I went back, is the, I went back the day, the night I got there, it was snowing, right? I woke up the morning. It was a blizzard the first day. Yes. So I'm literally, and, and I, 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 I send, I'll never forget, I, I sent a, I made a little video to send to the family, right? Mm -hmm. And my daughter ended up posting it on my account or whatever, and it went viral and others. And that's how everybody ended up knowing I was back at school. Mm -hmm. I, but I was sending it to them to let them know, hey, you know, dad is in a dang home <laughs> blizzard, right? <laughs> and, and I, I just can't. I, I just can't help but think like she has never ever seen the kind of snow she's about to see. that she's about to see. Jeez. So it's going to be a very that very phone call, delicate. Right, yes, like you, I, yeah, that's right. You've been checking the weather. Like, oh, she's going that's to right. She's gonna get hit. Week. Oh, and, and her roommate is from Alabama, so her roommate, <laughs> oh, her and her roommate trouble. have never done it. Neither one of them has you seen. You have to drive what around that like. campus, or you, it's, it's not. not so no, it's, it's, like it's not. It's small, but it's walking, and it's going to be probably to their knees. Um, but but the good part is they they do get out there and and sh <laughs> shuffle it pretty good. But it's gonna be cold. It's gonna be cold. There's no way around it. That's gonna be great. So so I gotta get her. I gotta get her the biggest jacket <laughs> I can find. So uh, I'm, I'm working on that. Uh, does she care that her brother's looking to go there, or she think it's cool? She thinks it's cool. Oh, that's nice. Because so she was. In in high school, not that he's going to go there, but that he's just nothing. Yeah, 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 that 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 they're you know Central, yeah. interested in him, and so she's she, because they the last you know three years um, they gotten real close oh, because cool. they went to high school together initially for their for for their their um, two years, yeah, and and so she was always big sister, mm -hmm. right? That's and cool. so she enjoyed that, and then the idea of him coming there. Uh, makes it um, makes it more interesting for her, yeah, and for him cool. actually. He's he's I think he's he sees it um, much differently than a lot of other schools because she mm -hmm. is there. I think that is a, a, a little slight advantage. Um, That's good for for Notre Dame. Huh. Well, he's got some time. I mean, he's got a little bit. I mean, yeah, he's got nowadays this. they make they make they make these kids commit so early. Well, That's crazy. Well. Right? well and it's a big reason for that. It's the it's the portal. Oh, so cool. now I, I the colleges to talk about that. colleges want to know what they have coming from a recruiting class, so they know how many guys yeah. they want to be able to go after in in the portal. Mm -hmm. Whereas you heard Dion say last year, he said he's only taking four or five kids from college, four, yeah. four or five. The rest of them are going to come from the portal because he's saying. 
I want ready made guys. I want guys that's ready to go so now. So you think college guys are like coaches, like that's more so, important? So, so to some have a in certain guy? schools, cer- some schools. So obviously you're going to have the big schools, mm-hmm. okay? Your top 10 schools, they're all going to go after the, the five star kids because those are the kids that become the superstars, right? Right. right. Well, if you can't get the five star kids, how about get the four and five star kids that are disgruntled where they are because they're not playing, right? So go after those guys. If yeah. let's say Georgia is getting all the five star kids, right? All of them not playing. Right. So hey, come over mm-hmm. here. You can play right now, right? So and those guys, those are the, some of the kids that are going in the portal. So some schools, the 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 I would say the bottom fifty, right? Or if the top ten is going for college kids. Everybody mm-hmm. else is saying we want a mix of college kids and Trans- portal kids. What do you think of the transport thing? I think it, I, I to me, I'll, I'll, I'll real quick. I think what it. I like the old rule. Now, I don't. I never transferred out or anything, obviously. Yeah. But I like the old rule where we had to sit out because it discouraged transferring, right? Because I feel like nowadays, and I this is just my opinion that if a kid gets beat out or he doesn't want to work hard, or he doesn't like yeah. someone, he's like, you know what, I'm out of here. I'm not going to work to, to be a, to be a starter. Where in our day when we were playing. It's like if someone came in or someone took your job, you either had to beat them out or sit behind them. That's right. Or, or transfer and sit out a year and then play. Right. But I just don't want – I mean, I know you had a young one going in. Like, what's your thoughts on the transfer portal? You think so, it's okay? Yeah, so here's here's my thoughts. So, uh, I thought it's, it's a good idea in theory, mm-hmm. but when it, beca- when it comes to practical use, there's unintended consequences mm-hmm. as a result of the portal, which is the high school kids are losing right. that window. So you're going to have – what's going to happen – is it's going to be two tier you're going to have the top 300 to 500 kids that are going to go to a top tier college the the bottom 500 kids to 2,000 kids Mm -hmm. are all going to go to smaller schools and when they get their opportunity they're going to boat and go to the bigger school Mm -hmm. so they're going to use a portal to, to to go upstairs and those four or five star kids are going to go use a portal to go downstairs, right? So they can play now, right? Yeah. And 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 it's good in that. Let's say a kid's just just committed to Michigan State. He's a freshman, at Michigan State. Now the coach is mm-hmm. fired. Now he, I, I I'm stuck, right? This right. was I only came here because of him. Yeah. Now he's gone. I have no recourse. Well, now, but, th- but you didn't can that leave. used to be? A, didn't that used to be in the old one? When it, somehow with the coach, you know, they, well, they they See, you, you could make some well, exceptions. Here's what they did, and that's what they did. They made that exception with the knowledge that they were going to this rule. Mm-hmm. So they made yeah. that hmm. right before they said you, you you everybody can do it. So initially, that was the first I gotcha. part of the the ruling that you could use it. If your coach left, you got a you could you could leave, a free, right? Yeah. A free a, a free go, and then they said, okay, well now every kid can get a free year, hmm. and you get one time. The second time you decide to leave, you have to sit out. That's the rule now. That's the rule now. Oh, so I did, so your second so you your can't just keep time. transferring. So so that's the issue with mm-hmm. the Tez Walker kid that's at that's at North Carolina. He used the port I think oh, once already, oh. and and he wanted to transfer a second time hmm. uh, yeah. from Kent State. To go to North Carolina, like I said, they want to yeah. want to move up, and then they I made him ineligible, and mm. so that's a big stink, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I read about that. But I didn't know what the, what, yeah. why it was. That. And so now you only get the one free move, and then the second one. So, so from that standpoint, I don't have a problem with the portal in that it's become big business, right? The, the yeah. college football, and so you want to give. The, the kids' the opportunity uh, to move and to play, but they only get one sh- one crack at it, right? The, other, the second time, then you, you're back in the same position. So I, I don't have a big problem with that. I think that that issue with getting beat out mm-hmm. is predominantly a quarterback issue. And so you, I can understand there where you're coming go. from. No, 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 no. I get where you're coming from because you're a quarterback. Your position. No, but, but running backs, but let's say running backs, down. you're going to keep three or four running backs. Yeah. Now, there's going to be a running back that's, that's out of the rotation and he's going to be like, yeah, okay, I'm the odd man out, I'm gone. But, but predominantly, where you see the big battle mm-hmm. is for the quarterback position, right? Yeah. And then they leave, and 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 that makes perfect sense because if my son was a quarterback, right? 
the first thing I'm going to say is if my son, let's say my son was a top 10 quarterback coming out of high school, right? The first thing I'm going to say is what program has dealt with a top 10 quarterback? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I want him to go because you have to now in college, they're thinking he's a potential 200 million dollar quarterback. Right. Because if you get to the NFL, that level, this is the numbers. This is what it, this is where it, it shapes out. Right. If you can be a starter in the NFL, you have the potential to be a 200 million dollar quarterback. So I want to know what offensive coordinator and what head coach has worked with 200 million dollar quarterbacks, yeah. because I can't send my son, my son there if you haven't had that experience. Right. And so that's my that would be my thinking yeah. if I'm a son, if my quarterback, my son is a quarterback. So it makes all the sense in the world that, okay, he goes there. I want him to have the best opportunity that yeah. he can have if that's what he wants, right? If he wants to play on the next level, then, okay, we go to Texas. Archie Manning won the job. He's going to be the guy for the, for the next two years, okay? Well, yeah. it is what it is, right? Shoot, so maybe the other kid's playing pretty good. Right, right. Well, well, no, he, but he's a, he's a junior this year, so he's supposed to be leaving. What if he doesn't leave? Then aren't you going to sit for another year? He, he got to go. out. No, just like um, a, uh, a Tule for um, for uh, Clemson. Yeah, he had another year. They said, "Sorry, <laughs> you got you to gotta go." Because <laughs> oh, we're ready. Yeah, we we got another guy that's in the lineup. He's in the queue. So what you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on in. Here it is. This is this is Ooh, Chef Evan. Ooh, Chef, how you doing? Good, how about yourself? Now listen, I'm gonna be honest. The hat is not just because you're here. He's a diehard.er Notre Dame. Go Irish. Yes, sir. Hey. Through. Like he didn't really want us to talk about it because he doesn't want pit people to like not like him because he <laughs> lives in Pittsburgh. <laughs> but diehard Notre Dame. That's okay though. Hey, hey. So him and Spence just created a cookbook. Oh. So they're on the YouTube. I've got a copy for you list. actually upstairs. Their YouTube Thank bestseller you. list. They sold out oh, in yeah. a day. Wow. Less than 24 hours. It, yes, it, it is a phenomenal cookbook. Evan has some phenomenal recipes, but this guy's face is on it as well. So that helped. <laughs> that helped. Yeah, it didn't yeah. hurt. Yeah. It didn't hurt. Yeah. Evan, are you coming back down? Oh, yeah, he's coming back down. He's bringing something else. It's because he's got to explain. Yes. yes. What's what, going what, on. What we, yeah, what we have. Because, because he, he likes They the, look good. He likes to do special things here. Evan, it's like some big chickens these wings came off of. Yeah. Yep. Goodness gracious, some bus chickens. All right. Some bus chickens. Oh, well, <laughs> <man. laughs> yeah. You know, that's some bus chickens, chickens, man. All right. Some big old chickens. Evan, you got your mic? People, by the way, people love when he gets them. Yeah. He, they ask for them all the time. All right, Evan, tell us what you got. Hey, what we got? Here you go. Some smoked whole wings with like a barbecue cayenne rub. Pop mm. up here, dog. If you okay. Want. Yeah. Get a little closer. <laughs> Detroit style pizza. Yes, sir. I like that. Yeah. Just right. He then, made the dough and everything. I did. Oh, did you? I did. You doughed it up. Yep. My yep. man. And then uh, oatmeal ra raisin cookies. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> That's no ice cream, though. No. Right? Yeah. Only special occasions. I know. But Steve, this is special occasion. <laughs> I, I thought about it. This I is thought special about occasion. It. I did. Hey, he never bakes either. He cooks, but he never bakes, but he did this for you. Stuff He's like yes. a comfort zone. I am a oatmeal raisin. Net. Yeah, so that's what he knows. That's what he we'll we did. It. We'll see if those hold up to the others. <laughs> Hopefully they do. <laughs> I'm just looking at them too. Ooh. That, that's why we put them over here away from you so you can try the other things. It's very smart. Very smart. <laughs> Evan, very smart. Yes. Thank you. That's what Evan does too. Any questions before we go? Um, not right at the moment. Are you gonna text me? <laughs> if, if, if I could. Last time yes. I was like, Coach Cower, do you have any questions for Coach Cower? He's like, no. He went upstairs. He texted me like three minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> Evan, man, if you got a question, man, ask it, man. I got, I got so much going on in my mind right now. You processing? Yeah. So okay. Like, hey, we, can we talk? Can we tell the story about the visor, the visors, or is, should we not say that? So, so you know, Evan. Evan, yeah. Evan, I will say this: my nickname, the Bus, came from Notre Dame. Yes. All right. People, a lot of people don't know this. So, when I was at Notre Dame. They used to, my coaches, one of my coaches used to call me Big Daddy. Big as a truck, <laughs> quick as a caddy. That's why they call him Big Daddy. Wait, right? wait what? Yeah, you know it's wait, good. Wait, 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 so, wait, 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 it rhymes, it's solid. So, so <laughs> Joe again? Moore, Joe Moore, the legendary offensive line coach who was at Pitt and who, who, who had all the great offensive linemen at Pitt, yeah. um, and he was at Notre Dame as well. And he was like, 
a big drum better guy. He loved me and, and helped recruit me the whole deal. So he had it. He came up with this nickname for me and he was like, uh, yeah. And he had a raspy voice. Yeah. 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 His big daddy. He's <laughs> big as a truck, quick as a caddy. That's why we call him Big Daddy, right? <laughs> so, so that was my nickname, right? With all of them, he had yeah, Big Daddy, hey Big Daddy, right? That's how he would be going, right? When I was running, and then a, somebody in the student body newspaper wrote an article, and how it said how they were, I re reminded them of a bus and this old kind of thing, and so what happened is the student, the student body, when I would run, we used to used to have a chant. Nobody stops the bus. <laughs> yes. What? A big old chill, like 10,000 I mean, 10, kids. Ah, they, nobody stops the bus. Every time I had a run, right? So who is the person that who's the writer that created? I don't that? know. I, I don't you know owe them so no, much money. No, I don't. I do not. I do not. I do not. That is not where <laughs> the story's going. I, I, yeah, it's not, no, no, no. I then said, "I am the buzz dog." No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so, so what happened was then I had a coach, and his name was. Um, uh, a lot, dude. No, you're terrible. You're terrible. <laughs> you are such a jerk. You're such a jerk. Anyway. Yeah, coach. Go coach. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Oh, right. Anyway. My, see, now I, you just, just wrecked my whole story. Because right? I'm, I'm feeling so bad. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm in trouble. Anyway. So, Coach Hayes, right? Jay Hayes, he was, the, he was the special teams coach at Notre Dame. And so, he used to joke with me before the game every, every day, every, before every game. Say, Bussy, how much you weigh today? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I weigh about 215 today. Oh, he's like, oh, you light today. Oh, you're going to have a big one today. And, I'll be, you know, I was 250, right? That was, right? And I was always a joke. And, but I would, I, would, I would tell him, I feel like that when I feel like I'm going to have yeah. a big day. So, so we would always joke. So Jay, when I got to Pittsburgh, had a brother that was a tight end for the Steelers. His name was Jonathan Hayes, big tight end. So my first year here, we went and played – the the um uh in preseason the Green Bay Packers. Well, John, John Jay Hayes had then left uh Notre Dame and went to Wisconsin with Barry Alvarez. When Barry Alvarez left, he was defensive coordinator at Notre Dame. Left, became the head coach, and later now he's the AD and the whole deal, right? Well, he was on that staff. So when when his brother came, he came to bring his kids mm -hmm. to see their uncle right one of his kids is jackson hayes the the, the 610 uh basketball player that played for the pelicans just now mm, went to okay. lakers that's one of one of one of wow. jay hayes's sons i mm. believe i believe i believe that's okay but anyway he he bring his kids to see their uncle so he i'm in the lobby oh, he sees me he says hey bussy he hadn't seen me in i hadn't seen him in 15 years right well just so happened, Bill Hillgrove and Myron Cope oh my were, were in the lobby. And no way. in the so game. So they didn't call you Bussy in L.A. or the no, bus or nothing no, I was the, I was the I was the uh, battering ram. <laughs> yeah, hey, I was the battering ram. You can't knock them for branding. You know what I mean? The branding yeah, yeah, yeah. was on I was the battering ram, yeah. right? <laughs> so so. so that's how, that's oh, how the, 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 and then he saw it, Myron Cope. And, and Bill Hillgrove. So in the game, what? Bill Hillgrove says, oh, yeah, uh, here, and his nickname, his nickname is the bus. And Myron Coe says, I, he kind of looks like a bus. The bus. <laughs> what a great that impersonation. Was it. Over. <laughs> yikes and double yikes. <laughs> <laughs> that's my guy. That was my guy. But that he says, that's, story. How, that's how the bus happened. And then he said, Myron Coe says, he kind of looks like a bus. Just think, if that moment never happens, that's right. What were, like, if, if 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 Jay doesn't bring his his kids to see their uncle, yes, that's it. So, don't happen. That's how it happened. That is un yeah, believable. Sure enough, you heard it. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> no one's ever heard that story before. <laughs> it's best fine. Now I have a time to get a beer too. Yeah, we can so do that. We could, we could transition yeah. from college mm -hmm. into other things. Yeah, yeah. See, you guys started with the mm. uh, Detroit pizza there. Right, good. Um, 
I've never uh, heard of Detroit Pizza. It's the big square. The big thick mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I thought it'd be suiting that we would start our beer journey in the same region. This is okay. from Founders, just outside of Detroit. Okay. Um, this is a uh, tropical, mm-hmm. it's called Tropical Treasure. Tropical Treasure. Tropical Treasure. Now, do you drink beer much? Uh, a little bit? I do. Okay. So he, we had James Harrison on this show, mm-hmm. who doesn't drink any beer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Which you can imagine. He also said he only works out one day a week. <laughs> Once a week. I, he was sitting here in a shirt <laughs> that like looked like my son was wearing it. He's like, yeah, I'm only working out one day a week nowadays. I, I asked him if it was for You're the right. full 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> and so we had him drinking. He's like, I don't drink beer. We're like, well, you got to. You're on the show, so you, you have to do it. And so we got him the we got him beers that had like, um, it was called unicorn farts or something. Oh, yeah, glitter in it. Glitter no. in it. It was like, like pink <laughs> and all kinds of just, just because it was him, right? You got to you gotta give him the girl. You like, have to. <laughs> of all people. Yes. So, Jerome, we typically do this um, mm-hmm. like a wine tasting, mm. right? Uh, the irony is that we don't know what we're tasting for, <laughs> and we know nothing about <laughs> tasting beers. We have learned over the course of this that the, the people who watch and listen to the show are, have been so gracious with us and taught us a lot through the comment mm-hmm. sections yep. Uh, yep. Uh, on uh, what we're looking for. So, this is a, a tropical hazy IPA. Um, smell it. You gotta smell it. You gotta know. Right? You gotta smell it. It's from Founders. It's called um, f- f- Yeah, Four Giants Tropical Treasure. I don't have any tasting notes or anything on this. So, so, so how gonna... do you pick the wines? You just go to the grocery store and find, find a couple? They, the fans send them in. They send them in. They send them to us. So, mm. for the fridge, look at all the different unique things. That, I mean, obviously, those ones are there, but so, all just people, it's like people send like one beer, two, four. Like they'll just send yeah. random beers in. And we just tried. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so these. So Thanks, Creekside. Yeah. So this one and the second one we're going to do, we're actually hand selected by Tyler over at Creekside. We get oh, a guy nice. who's, who knows way more about beer than yes. we do. Okay. Uh, so he, he picked these out for you. And the last one, I believe, was oh, sent that. in. Mm-hmm. So that, yeah. we'll let you uh, dive into that and see what okay. you think. What, do you, is there a certain kind of beers you drink? Do you like light beer, domestic beers? Do you, do you venture into crafty like IPAs and stuff or not too much? Not too much. Okay, well, not too much. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, 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 I'm interested. Okay. He didn't like it. I know. <laughs> Guess what? I don't know what to compare to. So I, feel, I, gotta, I gotta try the next. I one. feel like you would like you love this. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I knew it. I knew <laughs> it. <laughs> so Ben has become a huge like IPA guy. Oh. Like and so they're more bitter because mm-hmm. there's a, like more hops and stuff in it's it. More manly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. this is super fruity, my dog. Well, no. Oh, 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 no, oh, my bad. You see that? He'll, he'll, he'll change direction quick. My bad. <laughs> but this is that's yeah, very yeah. good. That's good. Yeah, that's very good. Um, 7.5 alcohol by content. Uh, 50 IBUs. IBUs, as we've been instructed, is a, is a measurement for bitterness. How bitter it's going to be. I don't know if 50's high or low, so that's where my knowledge ends. We're guessing the middle of the road. Yeah. Now the the alcohol content is seven seven point five, which is a high, higher one, yeah, for a beer. Yeah, and IPAs would, will historically be a little bit higher. Oh, they will. Yeah, unless you have okay. like a, what they call a session IPA, which is they make those to be more drinkable. So it's going to lower around four or five. So these are made to be less drinkable. Depends on the man drinking, <laughs> right? You know what kind of man you are today, oh, means, <laughs> right? Right. So it's not supposed to taste good. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like when you, you know, they, when they come up with this stuff, it's like, are you kind of thinking it through, guys? Yeah, the the guys that brew this, or mm-hmm. I should say the people, because there are some awesome uh, female brewers as well mm-hmm. that brew this. Um, they live on in a different world than, than most of us. Mm-hmm. Do. They are mm-hmm. definitely way tougher. Oh. So, pretty good. Another room didn't um, go back to college, but why did you go to Notre Dame? Oh, no, sure. Yeah, good. No, good question. So it was. It came down to not Western Michigan or Eastern Michigan or none of them. It came to Michigan, Michigan and Notre Dame were the final two. Mm-hmm. And what a lot of people don't know is my my football story is very unique. I did not play football until my freshman year of high school. I never played little league, none of that. So I was a bowler. I bowled. Mm-hmm. Right, well, you know, you used to bowl, right? Yeah, yeah. So. I bowled all the way until 14, like competitively. Really? I was one of the top kids in the state of Michigan, one of the top kids in the country. I got one 300 game because I, mean, I stopped at 14, but I was, you I mean, I could have kept Yeah, I still, you still got it. Yeah, I still bowl. Absolutely. So, so the thing was, I, um, 
I had to make a decision because I wanted to get a college scholarship. That was my whole idea. I want to go to go to college. Do they give bowling scholarships? Is there such now? Is there such? They a do. One school gave a bowling at that time. I no researched way. it. Ohio State. And at the time, I was living in Michigan. I was like, no I'm not chance. going to Ohio State, right? That's the enemy, right? And so, <laughs> that's, that's, it's still the enemy now. But anyway, yeah. but so I said to myself, I got to find a way to get to college. So I'm going to play football. Now, my freshman year of high school, again, no experience. I played in my neighborhood, you know, played on the street. So I played linebacker my freshman year. Uh, my sophomore year, I played tight end and nose guard. My junior year, I played fullback and linebacker. Okay, for the first time, like ever playing fullback. Well, that year, I had a pretty big year uh, as a junior um, linebacker and and fullback. And so, my senior year, I have a even bigger year at fifteen hundred yards on 120, 1,500 yards on 123 carries. Oh, Your wow. second year ever playing my a position. My second year ever playing a position, <laughs> right? And so- What's that like? <laughs> my third year ever playing a position at linebacker- Would you just have little kids trying to tackle you or something? Like, no, I was like school. Andy Reid. Like, 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 <laughs> <laughs> that, that pump pass and kick, no. no. So, but here's the thing. Coming out of high school, I was the number one ranked fullback in the country. The number two ranked linebacker in the country, in the country, parade all America, everything. So I, I played in the first ever McDonald's All American game, and it was in Reno, Nevada. Just like the, the McDonald's basketball game, they had a McDonald's football game. Same exact idea, wow. and I started as a fullback and linebacker because I was I was a parade Jeez. all American in both positions, and so every school. In the country, wanted me to play linebacker. But my high school coach told me, you know, son, you are, you too short to play linebacker. He had uh, Pepper Johnson, who had had played for the New York Giants, who was uh, won a Super Bowl and everything. So he had a couple guys that he had coached, and he knew that I was going to be too too short to play linebacker but he said hey you can be an incredible fullback because at the time i was 235 i ran a 448 at the at the michigan camp that year so i was really fast big and so he was like everybody wants you to play linebacker but you are better suited to play fullback well michigan wanted me to play Michigan wanted me to play linebacker they wanted me to be the starting linebacker my freshman year and so that's a hell of a offer yeah. but I wanted to play running back. At that point, I knew I was better suited to play fullback. Um, and Notre Dame said that not only will we let you play fullback, but we will not recruit another fullback for a, for a year. Wow. Right? If you, was, was if you decide to come, it was Lou Holtz, yeah. And so he, he was a man of his word, and, and he didn't. But that was the, the reasoning. Then once Michigan realized that I was going to play – once Michigan realized I wanted to play running back, they said, well, we can play you like Leroy Horde, fullback, tailback, right? Which, that was interesting. But they had just signed the number one running back in the country. Who was it? Out of Ohio. His name was Ricky Powers. No, was it Rick Powers? Yeah, I think Ricky Powers. That reminds me of, uh, what was the Powers? Kenny Powers? Kenny Powers. Kenny Powers. Kenny Powers. No, Rick, Ricky Powers. <laughs> I think it was Ricky Powers. I think it was his name. But he was out of Ohio. And so I knew Great football players that come out of Ohio. <laughs> yeah, some good ones, some good ones. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about your 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 <laughs> Ohio roots as well. But but anyway, so that that was the reasoning I chose hmm. Notre Dame over Michigan because I knew they wanted me to play linebacker. I would have been playing linebacker, and I'd have been an undersized linebacker mm-hmm. instead of a prototype fullback. But then when I got to Notre Dame, I got to Notre Dame my junior year. I played fullback the whole time. My junior year, two running backs get hurt, and Coach Holt says the only way we can lose the Air Force is if we fumble the ball. So, Jerome, you're playing tailback. And I was like, what? I've never played tailback in my life. I only played fullback for just my fourth year ever playing fullback. You want me to play tailback? And I'm like, oh, God. I was, like, panicking. Worked the first time. (laughs) Yeah. But but I had 150 yards, 
in two touchdowns that game. Jeez. And so, but then I he started to play me like the last three or four games of the year. In the fourth quarter, we were up. He would put me at tailback, and we would kind of just run the, run the clock out, like a four minute offense. But that was it. And so then when I got to the when, when when they start recruiting me for the NFL, they said, "Well, you know, you can play tailback." And I was like, "Huh, tailback?" Wow. And then at at our combine pro day, I ran a four five two uh, at two fifty four. And so that's when it really got interesting. They said, yeah, we think you can really do it. And so I was just like. That's wild. Yeah. Then I found out how much the fullbacks made and how much the tailbacks made. I said, <laughs> shit, yeah, yeah, I can do that. He's like, tailback? Yeah. He said, damn right, I'm a tailback. <laughs> Did you guys run like like I, the I formation in Notre Dame? We were fullback. No. We were I, or how, no. What, what'd you we ran options, some option stuff. So we had some traps and some stuff like that. We did have a little option. Um we had a little option play, but it wasn't a true option play. You know what I mean? So it was um, it was pretty unique that you know people think I was a I was I had to learn how to play running back. That's wild. Yeah. So before your college coach uh, tells you that, like, hey, you know, you can play uh, linebacker, but you can be undersized. Did you favor one of those? Yeah, I was a linebacker. You like linebacker better? Why? So you like the contact? You like? Mm-hmm. I always felt, yeah. I was saying, people, people. people always say like defense a lot more used. I always run. wanted to hit people. I, I mean, I was a, I was a monster at linebacker. Yeah, yeah. We, we played in the state <laughs> playoff game. Pretty good running back too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We played. We played in the state playoff game, and the, the head coach of the opposing team at halftime runs over, tells my coach, and this was a quote in the paper. He said. You need to take him out of the game before he kills somebody. <laughs> that was that was the quote at halftime. And he told my coach, "How about that?" Yeah, that's unbelievable. That's, that's yeah, it. but but and your, so your style of play as crazy. a running back makes a lot more sense. Yes. So <laughs> yes. so I was a true fullback, and then when they asked me to play tailback, yeah. I had you know now they I get drafted, mm-hmm. and they say, "Well, you want you to play tailback." Well, first of all. I don't even know how to play tail. I don't even know. I mean, I don't know where to line up or nothing. You know what I mean? I just did it at Notre Dame. Do y'all do the same thing? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. So I go out and I'm and they put me at tailback. And so I'm learning. I'm just downhill. I'm just like a fullback. I'm running like a fullback, literally, right? Just running into people. Bow, bow, bow. And I'm thinking I'm doing a good job. Man. And you're like, well, you got to get as, more, as many yards as you can get. So try to make some people miss. I was mm-hmm. like, make some people miss? Oh, I can do that? How do you do that? <laughs> but I, don't even, I, I don't know. I never even that. tried to make somebody miss. Why would I want to make somebody miss? Right? And so I, and then I had to learn how to, how to be a tailback. So what I did after my first year, I had a separated shoulder, I had a bruised sternum, I had a, a knot on my hip that was about a baseball because all these hits I was taking, right? And I realized after my first year, shit, I can't run like that no more. <laughs> I ain't gonna make it, right? I was broke up, right? And so I said, that off season, I start watching other running backs, and like like I watched um, Barry Sanders had a spin move. Mm. It was incredible. He could spin like a top with not losing speed. Mm-hmm. Ricky Waters had a had an incredible stiff arm. Um, who else did I look at? Um, I watched Emmett had a great third arm. His balance was 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 incredible. So I was watching all these guys trying to figure out how to do it, mm-hmm. right? Because so I didn't know how to do it, right? I didn't know how to make people. I didn't do any of that. So. So for me, always had good feet though. Like, but but, that, but but you just didn't use it. I didn't know how to. Yeah, so that's, that's why if you don't, if you ever forget when we used to practice. So I had a thing. I used to run full speed. Like when we have our little our practices, I used to run full speed because I had to. Try, I was always teaching myself how to do something. <laughs> Because I, you know, like a lot of guys, running backs, they learn at eight, nine, ten years old. They get, you know, they they learn all of this stuff. I had to teach teach myself all this. So for me to think that I could be a Hall of Fame running back, that was never even a thought. I was even trying to figure out how to play the position. So to look at my career and say, you know, thirteen years later, you know, I think I retired. I was like fourth leading rusher of all time, fifth, yeah. like it's just incredible because. 
I didn't, had never played the position before I got drafted. And you're That's teaching it to yourself. I'm teaching myself how NFL. to play. That's all running back. That's awesome. I, that's I mean, just mm-hmm. fooled what us. A cool story. That's yeah, you fooled us. That's man. awesome. <laughs> yeah. um, well, we'll let you let you. What do you think of the pizza? Awesome. Have you done, wait till you get a wing? <laughs> I'm about to go to a wing now. They got a nice little. You don't like spicy a little mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. They have just a little bit of spice mm-hmm. to them. Have you tried the wing yet? Not mm-hmm. yet. They're spectacular. Yeah. Um, Am I gonna want more? Yeah. Have it. Have yeah. Give me more wings. <laughs> Um, I'm waiting to get a cookie till till Bussy does it. Mm. Trying to keep those over. I know you. Mm. <laughs> um, wow, that's that's that, that's that's total. What uh, amazing and fasc- fascinating. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't cut you off. No, no, yeah, okay, you're good. I was trying to let him have a chance to, to yeah. eat a little bit. No, go ahead. Um, well, no, I just have not like questions, but like things I'm just like curious about. When you so you got drafted to L.A. Uh-huh. Right? It wasn't they weren't in St. Louis? They were L.A. And you played there how many years? Mm. Two years? Two years in L.A. and then the team moved to St. Louis. Oh, so you did, did you go to St. Louis then? One year. Okay, so you went to St. Louis. Mm-hmm. So you were, you were at the Rams. We'll just say the Rams for three years. Yeah. You were in, so you would have been in L.A. with the Rams with Joe Namath. <laughs> <laughs> okay. His dude. last year when you were here? No? Okay. <laughs> that setup was so I thought, good. I thought, <laughs> you were sure so convincing. You were such a piece of shit. That was good, by the way. No, but what, when, uh, <laughs> when you got traded... Like did did you see any of it come? Like what what was, you know what what was the thought in your head? Like when when they came to you or did like did you want out? Like how, what's yeah. the whole story? Oh great! Because that was before this, I was another good one. So before I was around. So, my first year, I win rookie of the year. I rush for, I lose the Russian title, to it. I'm sorry, I lose the Russian title to Emmett Smith by like. 40, 50 yards. Okay. In the last game of the year, we go all the way down to the wire. So I, I think I finished with over 1,400 yards my, my rookie year. Now, I'm, I'm Pro Bowl. I don't know if I was all pro that year, but, but at, the, at, the, at the Pro Bowl, the three running backs for the NFC. So here's when I knew I had made it. The three running backs for the NFC was – me, Barry Sanders, and Emmitt Smith, right? <laughs> that I, I'm like, I'm a rookie. I'm like, oh, I have arrived. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, what? Was Barry, I don't mean to cut you, but was, being from Detroit, was Barry like? Oh, he was a man. Everything, right? He okay, was a man. Assume, yeah. and, okay. and it was neat because my agent was his agent as oh, well. Okay. So I knew, had, you know, I knew him a little bit. I didn't know him much, but he Still, was, he was the there, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Barry said, I mean, what? So. It was Billy Sims and then Barry Sanders, right? Billy Sims, he was at um, the, the Lions before him. Anyway, so it was just like, man, here it is, my first year, do all of this. And then my second year, another big year, Pro Bowl, uh, all that stuff, right? So my third year, we're like, hey, let's talk about a contract. Something, I mean, yeah. something. I mean, I, I was drafted 10th pick. But I'm clearly I've outperformed this this mm-hmm. contract, right? So we're like, let's talk about it. And they were like, hey, okay, we we're moving to the, to St. Louis, but once we get to St. Louis, we'll we'll talk about Who it. Who have been the co- who's the coach there? I was just about to say, oh, okay, we had just fired um, Chuck Knox, who was the head coach. He was at Seattle, and then was here. He's a he's a um, uh, Pittsburgher. I think he's from uh, I think. Aliquippa, okay. somewhere around in there. So he's from he's from this this area. He's from Pittsburgh area. Anyway, so they they say, okay, let us get to uh, St. Louis mm-hmm. and get situated, and then we we'll talk about it. Yeah. Well, how about they got to St. Louis and they wouldn't even return my guy my agent's phone call. So I'm like, man, wow, they won't even return his phone call. So then I called. They wouldn't even call me back. Okay, so I said, okay, nobody wants to call. Then I'll wait to hear a call. So camp opened up. I wasn't there. They're mm-hmm. like, well, where's Jerome? I said, we don't know. We haven't heard from him. Okay. So well, what, what, then I, I get a call. Brrr, hey, what's going on? Oh, you guys finally decide to call. <laughs> we, well, we've been reaching out to you guys for months. Oh, well. We, uh, <laughs> then they start backtracking. Mm-hmm. Nah, nah, nah. And, and for me, it was a principal issue. 
because if the organization they they don't respect you enough to just call you back. Yeah, just yes. Tell me no, hey guys. Listen, you you only two years. You got a five year deal. We had it, but there was one caveat to that. We had a five year deal, but it it could go to a four year deal if I had three things done. Mm. If I rush for twelve hundred yards twice, and if I go to one Pro Bowl. Well, my first year, I had I killed two of those so, yeah. three things. So I needed one twelve hundred yard season, and it'd be a four year deal. So we were under the under the premise that mm-hmm. guys, this is really a four year deal. So let's at least talk about it. So it was a principal issue for me because they would not even talk to us <clears throat> after they told us to talk talk to them after they got yeah. to St. Louis. I mean, it wasn't like we didn't have the conversation. <laughs> they said, "Call us when we get there. and then then they wouldn't call us back." So, anyway, long story short, I I didn't I I held out. I came back. Well, the head coach, his name was Rich Brooks. He was at Oregon for a long time and then decided to to go into the NFL. Well, he felt as though I lied to him because when he had came, he he asked like a lot of the veteran guys, "Hey, if I if I asked you guys to come to training camp a couple of days early, would you be guys be comfortable with that?" We were like, "Of course. New new system, new everything. Sure." Well, I'm in a holdout situation. He's thinking that, "Well, you told me you were going to be here. right anyway." So, that was his position and this whole thing. And so the season goes and it's, they bring in another running back. Are you playing? You're playing though. I'm playing, but you're, but it was, yeah, yeah, but I it guess. was, it was like they were sabotaging. Mm-hmm. And so I'll never mm-hmm. forget. We play in the Atlanta Falcons. I have a 40 yard run, a 40 yard run. Right. And this is when Dion was at, he was in, um, in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And so he had to tackle me. He, he didn't do it. <laughs> he made a business decision. He was like, ah, I'm not going to do that one. So he kind of was hanging on. Yeah. So he saw Jumped me coming and he went on the side. I was like, ah. But anyway, <laughs> um, I have a 41 yard run and then I don't play another down. Mm. Another down. I didn't want you to get 100 yards or anything crazy. I mean, well, he just didn't want me to have any success, so yeah. that then I, he would have to play me more. So I sat the rest of the game. So I'm sitting there like, what is going on, right? You're down for the rest of my – never forget my, my running back coach. Are you down? What are you talking about? Yeah. But anyway, Jeez. so at the end of the season, I go to them and, and we say, you know, can we meet? So I'll never forget, we're meeting in San Francisco at the sh- the Shrine Bowl or whatever I think East West Shrine Bowl he was out in San Francisco at the time with the bowl games and we met we we're meeting with the, the 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 top brass the GM the vice president and the coach so we all met me and my agent and we asked for a trade and long story short they agreed to us seeking a trade and so that's how it happened so then I have an opportunity. There's two teams that are willing to trade for me. It was Pittsburgh, and the other team was the Houston Oilers. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know Steelers fans, no, they, oh, they don't no. even know this, what happened. So it was the Steelers and Houston Oilers. So both teams were willing to give the same exact thing. Mm. So my agent says, the Steel- I mean, the, the, the Rams are fine with the compensation, so whichever team you want to go to, they both giving the same thing. So you you can, in essence, just pick out where you want to go. Well, my agent said, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna just chime in, just give you my opinion." He says, "I've got a guy that is gonna be the first running back taken in the draft. I would prefer you to go to Pittsburgh because they're picking 31 because they just lost to the Cowboys in the Super Bowl." And they were mm. and and Bam Morris had just gotten some trouble or whatever, and so they were they were moving on from him. And so they said, um, he said, I would prefer you to go to Pittsburgh because the Oilers is picking fifteen, he, they're picking thirty one. Yeah, I would, I, and I said, hey, I appreciate your honesty, you know, if that factors in in in, in it. But what I was looking at was, I was looking at. Because having been the 10th pick in the draft, I knew the higher you pick in the draft, the, 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 the sorrier the team is, yeah. right? 
Well, so I so shit. then I realized, well, you know what? My best opportunity is to go to a team that just lost in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. They are prime. They got a championship caliber oh, team. Yeah. Why would I not go? Why would you know? So it was just and the history of they like big running bags and all of that kind of stuff. So it all factored in. So I told him, you know, I want to go to. I'd rather go to Pittsburgh. Well. Just in the short caveat, small caveat to that, the the running back was Eddie George, and so Eddie went to oh. Houston, yeah, and then ultimately ended up in Tennessee. Yeah, but yeah. it could have been the other way around wow. had that all wow. changed. So yeah, and that's how I ended up in Pittsburgh. There's wow. so there are so many of these little moments throughout all your guys' stories. It's like, oh, if that didn't happen, then this wouldn't happen. Oh, and but, you're sitting yeah. here in this legendary and, career. And, and I'll tell you. Ten people know that story. So not anymore. We've got millions. Not anymore. Ten million. Seven million. million. That's right. People that that's watch right. our show. That's right. You're, that's the tens of millions. Yeah. Have. Oh, that's, that's unbelievable. Insane. Um, yeah, that's just like I, I've known you for a long time. I didn't know any of that. That's why mm-hmm. it's like it's so fascinating. I feel like wow. I feel like that doesn't the happen. The Bussy story. I mean, everything. None yeah, of that, that you're. I just thought for sure. I thought Bussy was like just. I mean, obviously it started in day, but it never like never would have been anything. No, it wouldn't amount to anything Jeez. until we I got to Pittsburgh. Wow, that's funny because you know I was called the reason I got the name Big Ben was in college, my sophomore year. I mean, I was tall, but I was pretty skinny. But my sophomore year, we threw, um, we were playing Akron at home, and we, you know, it's like last play of the game. We had the mm-hmm. ball in like our own twenty-five yard line, and I threw a hail mary, and we caught it and won it. And the play, like it was one of those ones where, like, it's, it's just so crazy because the, the receiver that caught its name was Eddie Tillets. So they say it's not over till it's over. Get it? Like, it's just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's so, like, it was the chances. The, right? hey, these like nicknames that. are immaculate. Yeah. Well, so the play that we scored on, our, our coordinator put the plan, it was called Big Ben. Had nothing to do with me. It was just his play he brought with him from where he was before because <laughs> Big Ben, like, everyone goes deep, right? Is like, that it's really like huh? 100%. So the play was called Big Ben. Like, that's how we call it. And so we scored on it. And that's what? like, so then it's like, oh, Big Ben strikes and this, that, and the other. Meaning like the, the play, play Big, Big ben. ben. But then people <laughs> ran with it. And so I had that through. And then as I got, you know, we started doing better, bigger and better. Then and it's like, Big that's ben. how I got that nickname was from college. What? Something like that happened too. So who knows if we don't. How did I never it. know that? I don't know. I, I mean, I'll tell a lot of people. Well, I, I think too, it's like, oh yeah, he's 6'5". Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense you're big. But yeah. So, yeah. Speaking of you and your, your years, I, I, I got a, a little bit of information. I was shocked. <laughs> They said Ben, his high school played at the middle school. Yeah. Stated. I was like, what our is stadiums. going on, man? <laughs> yeah. you know, our, our, I didn't know you was a middle school guy, though. I thought you was a <laughs> like, big time guy, man. I didn't know you was a middle school our, guy. No, wow. no. The stadium, our high school stadium <laughs> is at our middle school. Because our high school is Damn. like our high school is like on the outskirts, like outside of town kinda. And our middle school is like in town. So, so they hold you back? They can walk to it. Did they hold you back a couple of years? <laughs> you know what? After, I'm just after, saying, I know there was some. I know. Just, like, you know, one year throwing for Some dumb comments 4, about there. I, mean, I didn't think the dumb comments were like real dumb comments. <laughs> when they said he played at the middle school, I was like, what do you mean? His high school played at the middle school. He, did he play at the middle That's school? That's why I had to go to Miami. Was he, was he playing I middle school? Like, <laughs> That's why I went to the Harvard of the West. Said, <laughs> then they said the Philly, high, the Philly College. Played at the middle school too. I say you got to be kidding me. What is it about the middle school? But what is it about Finley? What does that say about Finley? Like it's got a great, middle, got it's got one, a great middle school stadium. Like they got <laughs> one stadium. Their middle school program is immaculate. The middle school gets it first. <laughs> you guys got to share with the there middle school. There's actually three like, middle schools. Really? There's actually three middle schools, and that's only one of the middle schools got that. The other ones didn't have it. So <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's middle you, school I went to. Finley, high, Finley Middle School. You get this. The high school has to check with you guys. I feel like the high school got to check with the middle school. Hey, you guys got something on this day? How, how crazy is that? Hey, Bush, you want a cookie? I do. I do. <laughs> this is how he's got to go. like shut this. him up. I do. I'm cleaning up and everything. Getting ready for that one. Hold on. That is a wild story of getting to Pittsburgh. Yeah. Mm. As we're talking, uh, yeah, you want to dish, dish out of beer there? Soft in the middle. Yeah. Is it? That's the first thing you got to do. One. With an oatmeal yes, raisin sir. cookie, it is phenomenal. if it's not soft in the middle, don't trust it. Don't even bite it. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't even don't bite it. Don't even bite into it. 
Okay, well, I'm gonna ask Ooh. you a question. I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna as you wow. you kind of started it, but as the you as you but is like for real. He doesn't I'm bake though, it. so it might not be any good. It starts with texture and softness. Texture and there softness so far. because of oatmeal cookie is hard. Your mom is where to come from? Your mom or grandma? Who who? How where did where to start from? That's a good question. Ah, that's a great question. I don't even know where it came from. Um, my grandma used to make oatmeal raisin cookies, and I one time I asked her. I said, Grandma. Can you take the raisins out and put chocolate chips in there? Because I didn't want raisins. I wanted chocolate chips. And so she switched it over. Did and then it? everybody loved it. And it was my It idea. was oatmeal chocolate oatmeal, chip. Oatmeal raisin. And I got rid of the raisins because I didn't want the raisins. How was it? He just gave me a look. He just gave me a look. Like a real, you, real look. Let me tell you what I, what I really, 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 really like about it. More than anything. You know when you just bit into it? You had a, just a touch of crunch. Oh, mm-hmm. that's but not too much. Not too much. <laughs> just a touch. That's spectacular. Because I'm a connoisseur. I, I want the oatmeal. <laughs> I want the Jerome Bettis food show. That's they don't what call I want. me the bus because I was scared of eating. <laughs> That's for sure. I no. like that the raisins aren't super chewy. Man, they I'm are. good. I'm damn good. I'm pretty good. Um, That's one where you get a, a napkin. You put it in a napkin. Mm. And that goes home <laughs> because this is like a perfect candidate for a little milk. Oh, do you want me to get some milk down here? Ooh. No, don't do that. Then I'm gonna go Ice cream. <laughs> go yeah. to don't do that. Don't wake up. Wake I'm going to take my shoes off. <laughs> no, no, this is just a podcast. It's not like a day That's in the life. You, <laughs> you, <laughs> you got to go. You, I know you don't watch the show, but that's pretty par for the course for our yeah. podcast, to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is our yeah. first dessert, right? That's really yeah, cool. I don't think we've had a dessert I, I can remember. Mm. He, Evan knew. He said, you know, he likes Damn. oatmeal raisin. And he said, ice cream's only for special occasions. He said, but, you know, oh. I feel like I'm going to do the oatmeal raisin. He's going to like those. <sighs> He's going to like, I like these. <laughs> I like these. Yeah, I'm going to let Evan know. Um, oh, we got to talk about we gotta, Well, we got to talk about real quick, because we got to yeah. talk Super Bowl a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to because I guess we should we should probably go back a little bit because I'm I about to say we got to go a little pre yeah, we yeah. got to talk about the game. Let me tell right. you let me tell you what really pisses me off though. Oh, I boy, do have to go. say this. Let I got to put cookie. this out there because I hear I hear fans. Oh, I want them to know it pisses me off too. <laughs> <laughs> set it straight, Jerome. Set it straight. Set it straight. I get so much, and man, I'm a big fan of yours. What were you thinking in the indie game when you fumbled? I wouldn't even go to that. No, no. I'm not saying you. I, I just got to get some shit off my chest. <laughs> this is me. This is a personal thing. I had nothing to do with you. I'm like, <laughs> that was shit. showing you. You can just it's say like it to the bubbling. people. It's bubbling. People always ask me, like, uh, uh, how'd you feel when you fumbled? I felt like shit. I mean, I felt <laughs> terrible, right? It's like it, it, people want me to, like, reenact. The worst moment of my career. It's like all these great things I did, all these, all these yards and all this stuff, and like I fumbled like once, t- yeah, yeah, ten to fifty times, like total my whole career, right? And and everything is well. What what were you thinking? Or what happened? You saw what happened. Uh, I fumbled. I, it's like oh goodness, well, it just wear, they wear me out with that. It's like, but they, but they want me to be happy about it. Uh, or like the conversation, so, like have a conversation. Oh, I'm not happy. I, so I, I, I do. I never usually do this. I mean, sometimes I have a little just list of questions so I don't forget things. My, my, one of my questions was, the tackle. Are you over it? The city? <laughs> no. I got a problem with it. I don't have a problem with the tackle. I'm so thankful. No, but so, the question. I'm but, so super thankful for the tackle. But the, but the question. But that's all my thing. Because freaking yeah, question. I know that. Okay. I get it. So uh, all the time, I'm not gonna ask that one. Yeah, um, it's cross that one out. Super Bowl is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's let's go. Uh, let's cross I, that one out because we that was one. gonna get back to that. I know. We oh, oh, okay. No, I was okay. gonna, I was gonna go back. And you was gonna yeah. say I was gonna go back. Buzzy, to the- Buzzy, what was you thinking? <laughs> That's what you was gonna say. I'll be like. I've told the story a million times too, so I get tired of it too. But, but that, I, I figure that you don't like it. But so that's like, nice. But, 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 but imagine. Oh, I, yeah, I can imagine. No, I know. The word, your worst moment I know. ever. I so know. that's, but that's like a, when people bring that up to you, it's like a, hey, this is like one of those iconic oh, moments. They're like, this is so yeah, knowing how Jerome about feels about what, it now. What do we have here? What do we have here? <laughs> let's, let's, get a, let's get a pause before we get back into that dumb well, stuff. 
Speaking of indie, yeah, uh, this is actually we were going to follow your journey starting in Detroit. This is going to be just outside of South Bend. This is from a brewery called Three Floyds. All right, so oh, wow. we're in Indiana Three now. Floyds. Uh, it's called, uh, I believe it's called okay. Cat Date. It's a double You're IPA. A guy, aren't you? Right? So whatever we had the first one, this is double it. No. <laughs> this is 9.5 alcohol. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Night night bus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> get the milk. This is. Bring this out is the milk. Bus here. <laughs> okay, cookies. Ooh, no question. This is a great out here. This, I'm going to sleep on this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That's way stronger. Yeah. Ooh, that's you a one. That's you a, can taste that's it. That's a half or, half or to three quarters. You're not, you're not drinking a That's bowl. a, yeah, that's a. That's good, but it's not, yeah, that's a, that's a big one. You can taste yeah. how strong yeah. that one is. I don't trust it. I mean, look at the, this is the cats. Look, You're a cat tr- guy. I'm not a cat guy. You have cats. I have one cat, and it is against my will. My wife brought that cat into my house. No. And, and, and you have a cat, you're a cat guy. Come on, don't because do this to me. Don't do this to me, Jerome. No. Please. Here's why. Because you say it's true. No. So I don't want to no. have to live no. like this. No. I'm getting rid of my cat, though, on Sunday. Does that count? Oh, no. Oh, what? That feels Until weird. you get rid of it. Not like that. I'm giving See, it away to someone who loves it. Until you get rid of it, you still have it. So, so because guess what happens? I'll own this. A lot of shit can happen between now and Sunday. And <laughs> when you're supposed to give it away. And so everybody think, oh, he gave the cat away. Cat's still at the damn house. Mm-mm. No, I've learned that. Uh, well, I'm about to give it away. I swear. Nah, not until it's gone. Until it's can you consider it? I'm gone. okay. I'm okay being a cat guy till Monday. Well, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Um, no, <laughs> I can't, gotta, I'm sorry, dude. That got me. I gotta. That's fine. I'm not gonna ask about that thing. That's that a play. good cookie, man. Um, I, yeah, no, that's a good cookie. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, I wanted to go back and oh, get I, and get I your. I no, <laughs> I already looked at them too. <laughs> I already eyeballed it. Too much. If one of you bugs grab it, I'll be salty. I'll be looking at you right there. He said, What you doing? You, oh, you don't want that other cookie. cookie. You don't want that other cookie. <laughs> oh, I'm glad that you like them. Um, the third beer is a warm glass of milk. Tell us, because I've told this story a few times mm-hmm. as well, but can you tell us um, your thoughts, how, how crazy you thought I was after the AFC Championship game? <laughs> My rookie year, and you were about you were, were you how close were you to really retiring, and then coming back like what kind of what went through your head because we because obviously people okay. talk a lot about You're, us like me and you sitting on the bench yes yes and then us walking the tunnel I together never forget it so, and so P, I have my recollection I was yeah with this. so here's my recollection and and we are we are right there on the sideline. And I think we ta- we taking a knee on right on the field or maybe sitting down. I don't, yeah. I don't remember. We were sitting I down. thought we were sitting on the bench, but we, I, I sitting, could be sitting on the bench. And I remember you saying, you know, but just you know, give me give me one more chance, I get you to the Super Bowl, right? And I and now it's always it's, Dumb rookie. it's grown, right? It's grown, it's grown now. <laughs> because you think like if you had, if your had ass hadn't thrown two interceptions, yeah. we'd be in the Super Bowl. <laughs> to me, get me to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> it's almost there. <laughs> what you mean? You don't get me there. Shit. <laughs> hey, to be fair, the Patriots cheated. One, for sure they did. It's not even a question mark. It's not even a question in my mind. It was fourth and one. It was fourth and one. They called timeout. First of all, Coach did this back in the day. This meant uh, counter. They they saw this. Coach called it. Office line coach did that on the sideline. They called timeout. Who normally goes to the sideline on a timeout? The defensive captains, right? They told the nose guard, Washington. They pulled him to the sideline. Big 400-pound guy. He don't want to go to the sideline and come all the way back. <laughs> cold. Right? It was cold. cold. What, what he want to go to the sideline for? They yelling, Joe, made him go to the sideline. And I, I always thought, that, like, what, did, what are you going to the He went all to the sideline and came back. Then we run the play. He loops into the hole. <laughs> Washington does. They stop us on fourth down, right? That's a mm. critical play in oh. the game. Mm. They, were, they had our signs. And they called a timeout to get them ready for that play because they knew it was coming. Mm-hmm. No uh, there, question yes, in my mind. Was. I remember vividly because I, I thought, why is this big dude? Why is this big dude going to the sideline? Mm-hmm. 
But anyway. But anyway, that's, that's yeah, yeah, I regret it. <laughs> I'm not mad about that one either. So you thought I was, you thought I was, obviously you were mad at me, or you were no, already mad no, at me. No, 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 I was not. I mean, I, I get it, I was mad. I'm joking, actually. But. I, I wasn't even thinking that, I was joking. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I. Were you close to being done? Was it, was it seriously close to being done? Like you were. I was done. Yeah. I was done because I, and it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't at that moment I was done. Mm-hmm. It's when I went back home and at night and I slept on it and I was just like, physically, yeah. I was saying to myself, I, I can't do it no more, right? I, I don't, you know. And so, because I had, I had had a knee injury the year before, right? I had a knee injury the year before I came into that season, and they brought in Deuce. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. They brought in Deuce Staley that year. But I was healthy. And so then they say, okay, well, we're going to split you guys, and you're going to drum. You'll take short yardage and goal line, all that stuff, right? And so I knew, you know, I I wasn't upset about it, but I was just saying, okay, well, I don't have I don't have much left, right? And so, at the end of the season, I was just like, "This is you know, I kind of get laid it all out there. This that's all I have, you know. We had another one more crack at it, and we couldn't get there, right? Mm-hmm. And so I was kind of resigned to my fate that I'm never gonna get to the Super Bowl, right? Yep. I'm, I'm, that's not the driver anymore. And so I was just like, okay, that's it. I'm good. So that next day. I asked Coach, Coach, can I talk to the team? Can I address the team? He's like, sure, okay, sure. And that's when I got up and said, hey, you know, thanks, guys, for everything. You've been great teammates to me and crying and all that kind of stuff. And, and that, was, that was it. I thought that was the end of it. Luckily, I was the first alternate for the Pro Bowl, and Corey Dillon broke his ribs in the Super Bowl game with the Patriots, he broke his ribs, couldn't play in the, in, the, in the Pro Bowl. Then I got to go. And that year, we had we were 15-1, so we had like eight guys in the Pro Bowl. And that's when uh, Larry Foote and Clark Hagens, we had a, a Steeler Luau uh, at the Pro Bowl because the coaches were there too. The coaches were the coaches because we lost in the FC. Right. So they were the coaches, and we had eight players and who, who, who all brought players. So it was about 27 players there, and that's when they told me that the Super Bowl was in Detroit. That's what I was going to ask. Is that, if it wasn't in Detroit? If it wasn't in Detroit, I would not, I would not mm. be back. If mm. the Super Bowl was not in Detroit, I would not have come back. Dang. They told me the Super Bowl was in Detroit, and I was like, mm. man. Yeah. Then I started thinking about the kind of team we had, mm-hmm. and I was like, whew. Just, we got a team. Mm. I don't know if I want to. Then I start looking at the reality of it, how how good I thought we could be, and it turns out we laid an egg. Yes, we laid an egg, man. The mm. beginning of that year, I can't believe it, right? And yep. and it all came back, but but you know when it came back, and I, I'm gonna mess with Coach Kyra about this. It came back when he told. When we lost to to um, Cincinnati at home, and they was shining their shoes with the terrible towel yeah. and all that, Hushman's out, right? TJ, and yep, Chad. TJ Hushman's out. When they did that, Coach Cower, never forget. We came in the in the room in the in the, in the room. And he took all that stuff off the board. He erased all that stuff because he used to do week by week all that mm-hmm. crap. He took all that up, and he just put Chicago right. And it was like one game, and that was it. But he also told the coaches to kind of, hey, whatever. And so he let um, Wiz, Wiz and Hunt call whatever he wanted to call. He wasn't looking over his shoulder. Because he used, to, he used to police his calls. Oh, I, I let him have it. Yeah. Yeah, he used to police his calls. <laughs> like, you know, he wanted to call this, call that. Like, the reverses and stuff that we ran in the Super Bowl, he would have – we ran that same play, um, but we ran one of them in, in that um, Denver game. Mm-hmm. He would have never yeah. agreed to that first one, mm-hmm. right? Because he was so anti – because he used to always say, 
if you got to trick them, then you can't beat them. Yeah. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> if you can't trick them, you got to trick them, you can't beat them. Yeah. You know, but sometimes the plays, say, well, it, it, it sets up in the moment. You got them, you know, in this mode. Now you can take advantage mm-hmm. of it, right? And so a, a true offensive coordinator takes advantage of those opportunities yeah. where he was a defensive guy, mm-hmm. right? And he was, he, all oh, he was ever present. Let me say that on the play calling side. Yes. And when he took the reins off of them, our offense totally changed. Oh. Right? And we start letting it go. I mean, you we was letting them you were letting them go. We were throwing it off. You was gate. letting it go, mm-hmm. right? And we had that hadn't done that. And yeah. so that's when we yep. became a different football team. And yeah. it was the, that was the week where and you for Chicago where you ran because, over Brian yeah, Urlacher? Right. Because he knew. <laughs> yep. Yep. In the snow. Yep. In the Bus snow. Bus tires. Yeah. That's right. I remember yeah. that for sure. Yeah. Willie Parker. Yep. Willie Parker was um, was starting, and he played the first half and, and, and couldn't get any traction. And coach said, okay, we, we need you need in the, the second half. the snow tires on so, the bus. Yeah. So I had one yard in the first half and 100 yes. in the second yeah. half. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. That picture uh, is so it's, iconic. It's that a, picture of you running over it. Urlacher? I, 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 there were times the, the the indie game and that one and a couple others where I wasn't carrying out a fake like I would you know just I wanted to see it mm-hmm. like when we we're on the goal line I'm expecting you to score every time mm-hmm. it's like I hand off and I I was yeah. right behind you and Brian like I saw it coming did you I was just I had a perfect view of it so I saw the whole thing it was unbelievable it was so much fun to and watch after that game we we exchanged shoes. Yeah, <laughs> that's a crazy. Part. So he got the shoes. There. He got the shoes that ran him over. So don't say. Oh, hey, I know. I don't the want fruit. these. Uh, so, uh, how, how, how you bought those? Though? I know. Dude. Oh my god. I, mean, I don't um, know if he even wanted to tell the story though. Yeah. How because what happened here? how'd you get your own you shoes? Don't worry about it. The funniest shit though. He won't sign the the picture. <laughs> he won't sign it. I wouldn't need it. Right? Yeah. I guess. I mean, I get it. That's because so every time you see me, you're like, that damn picture. I hate that picture. I hate that picture. He always tells me, I hate that picture. Speaking of that, um, <laughs> I was uh, I did an autograph signing today with Fanatics, and um, Scott and Nikki was there. You know oh. Nikki with the hair? Do you Remember you signed her wrist, and she got your name tattooed yes. on her wrist? I was oh. like, I was signing stuff, then I was like, is that Jerome's on your... So I signed a couple helmets there that you had already signed, <laughs> so we're on the, on the helmets. But anyway, I was like, is that Jerome's like, autograph? What is that? She goes, yeah, I was with him at the, when he got in the Hall of Fame, and I kind of made a thing uh-huh. and said, if you sign my wrist, I'll get tattooed or something. She told me yeah, started yeah. there. But anyway, um, I know we... Um, I've got to get going to football practice soon. I will I just you, a couple more you. things. I know you got to get out of here. How fun is that, man? Tell crazy. me, though. It's crazy. What, what do it's you crazy. do? I'm the fourth volunteer. You're the fourth volunteer. Yeah. Well, I'm like the fourth coach. I'm the volunteer. Yeah, I just, I did. We did design a whole new offense last night because we're terrible on offense. We're terrible. We're terrible. <laughs> you like, okay, it's enough of this. I gotta, I gotta try. I gotta, I gotta try to do something. something. Try design some things. Right. We're it's trying, like we're trying. Hey, we're trying to trick them because we can't beat them. <laughs> <laughs> we can't beat them. Try to reverse, oh. double reverse, Everything triple reverse. Can. Um, I want, just, but I do have. We're, we're going to do a thing we call two okay. minute, but that's okay. that's in a little bit. But I want to okay. ask you: when you got inducted in the Hall of Fame, how did you find out? Like, don't they always like surprise you or do something? Because Coach Coward told us his story, yeah. so I love to hear like what, so, what happened on yours. So, my story is is kind of crazy because I. So you're supposed to be at the hotel. They knock on the door, right? Mm-hmm. But. Do you know what's coming? Or do you, do you, no. You, like, be in the no, hotel, you're, you're, we might knock on your door. But the problem is, I had been in the hotel for a couple of years. I'm like, screw this. I'm not about to sit here again oh. and not get the knock, right? You feel like a jackass. You know, you're in the, the hotel. It's like, uh, well, shit, it's 730, man. They're supposed to come to something. What time? When they going to call? They, they don't tell you nothing. They just don't show. Yeah. You sitting there like, Just waiting. It's awful. Uh, it sure take a long time with that other guy. Should have been. And next thing you know, it's two in the morning. You like, you think they're gonna call? They're gonna knock on the door two in the morning? <laughs> you can't sleep. No, they're not gonna knock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, they forgot about me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> they think they're gonna knock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they knock softly. Exactly. Yeah, they might. So, they might. Right. Yeah. Right. So. So they had. Um, and it's it's really crazy because <laughs> they were doing a show. The knock on the door, and they were following the the um, president then at the time of the Hall of Fame as he knocks on the guy's door and, and tell them they're in. Mm-hmm. I wasn't there. <laughs> I was at, out because I had rented a house 
every Super Bowl, I would rent a house somewhere because I would just kind of stay away and just kind of do the appearances that I needed to do. And I had, you know, a group of people. Here. So I would rent a, an apartment or house somewhere away, right? And so I was just chilling at the house, and they were like, uh, where you at? I'm, like, I'm, I'm okay. just chilling. <laughs> like, well, we probably need you to get down to the hotel. And I was like, oh, 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 okay. I'm gonna <laughs> get on out of the hotel. So they didn't tell me, but they told me. Uh, <laughs> I was like, don't spare the petrol. Let go, let go, let go. Oh, my so, God. Did you like, act surprised when they did the knock and everything? Yeah, I was surprised. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, so funny. That's oh my god. That makes See, that all the behind that behind the scenes stories that I, nobody as ever a fan knows, that right? makes that moment so much better for me. So great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So great. I was, I, but you know what? So I had to. I waited. Had to wait a couple of years. And so the biggest, the most frustrating thing for the for the wait is. People used to used to say you didn't you make it in the Hall of this year, right? And they say, oh, but you're a Hall of Famer in my book. And I'm thinking to myself, but nobody reads your book. <laughs> <laughs> nobody reads your book. They don't even know the name. What do you mean? In my book, I don't. Who cares about your book? Who cares about your book? Yeah, yeah, nobody's so reading nice. your book. They're trying to be so loving and right. <laughs> it's like, but in your head, you're like, <laughs> because you hear it so much. Oh, you're a Hall of Famer in my book. I'm like, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Spencer, there's two cookies left. You want one? I'm gonna eat one. You no, want those one? are both for Jerome. <laughs> Actually, Jerome. <laughs> That's true. All right, listen. You want to get a doubt? Listen, right. listen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is the la this is the last thing we're gonna do, okay? Because okay. we're at time, and I know you got to go, and we got to go. This is this is a newer segment it's okay. called the two minute drill. Okay. So I'm gonna I have a bunch of questions here. Don't oh, look at me. Oh boy. Here and just. Okay. You got two minutes to answer, and we're gonna see how many we can get in two minutes. All right, and okay. I got one last question for you after we, oh, after, okay. we finish up, after we finish up. Okay, are you ready? Get my clock ready. Oh boy. Okay, ready? Yeah. You sure? I'm if sure. you do good, you get a cookie. I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? Here we go. A cat a bit. Start ready. Start. Favorite sport to watch? Golf. Pepsi or Coke? What do you call it? Like, what do you like, Pepsi or Coke? Better? Pepsi. Favorite food? Lasagna. Favorite sport to play? Golf. Do you call it pop or soda? Pop. What's your best golf score? Be honest. 70. Would you rather watch college football or NFL? NFL. Artificial turf or grass? Grass. Yep. Sunday night football or Monday night football? Sunday night. What makes you happier? Seeing a corner blitz and you have to block him or seeing a linebacker fill in a hole and you're running the ball? A corner blitz. Love it. What's your fastest 40? You said it. Uh, four, four, eight. What's your go-to pregame song? M Me Against the World. The only song I ever listened to in, in the whole time I played. Fourth and goal at the one. Sweep or ISO up the middle? ISO up the middle. Chocolate or vanilla ice cream? Vanilla. Favorite football player of all time? Wow. Of all time? I, I don't know enough. Of all time? Favorite? Gosh. Your favorite? No, ask me the best of all time. Ask who's your favorite player. My favorite? I, I didn't start watching until... Okay, pass. I can pass, yeah. <laughs> What's your go-to dessert? Go to dessert ice cream. Okay. <laughs> What's the last concert you went to? Beyonce. What's your favorite vacation spot? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I mean, time is how many timeouts do we have? How many timeouts do we have? Well, I, I, you asked the question. I, 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 I don't, I'm not on the clock. You on the clock. Um, <laughs> favorite vacation place is, um, wow. Do you want to pass? Right Spain. Now, Spain. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Harder thing to do. Run over a linebacker on the goal line or throw a halfback pass on the goal line with a linebacker coming at you? Neither one of them. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Uh, favorite singer or group? Oh, I got three touchdowns in the NFL. Four, favorite singer or group? Four, three or four. Um, new addition. Ocean or lake? Lake. 
One play left in the game. What's your go-to call on the goal line? I got two more. Give me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I love that play. What, what, what's your go-to dance move? Oh, right in the box. Stay right in the box. Okay. Last right one, there. almost time's up. Best QB tackle you ever saw. Oh, we're out of time. We're out of time. We're out of my time. My man! My man! My hero! Ben! Listen, hey. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I, I, you if you don't, no, 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 listen. If you don't make that tackle, if you don't make that tackle, man, Hey, I'm at the 7-Eleven, man. <laughs> I'm like, for real, man. If you don't make that tackle, I'm working at the 7-Eleven, man. No chance. Hey, <laughs> I'm I, telling you, it was so, that significant, man. So I had man. to ask the question. I would be a bum, man. <laughs> I had to ask the question about your halfback pass. I, you threw a half, one halfback pass with me when I pitched it to you, and you ran out, and you went to throw it, and you were so confident in practice. And the one time it was at home, I think maybe against the Jets, going towards the close end. On touchdown! The right side, it was a touchdown. But you threw it like you should... You, <laughs> no, I didn't do that. I didn't do that, man. And you said you to me, are, you came to me on the sideline. You said, "Man, I don't ever want to do that again." Well, no, it was, it was. They were coming in at me. I was. It was an uncomfortable feeling that I knew I was going to get hit. <laughs> I let it go. I you let did. it go. Touchdown, and it was a touchdown. It was a touchdown. touchdown. But I was you very stood uncomfortable. Pocket, you stood in the pocket in the face of of a blitz, and I you got did, it off. I got it off, and and it was a touchdown, and I, but I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't anticipating the <laughs> feeling. They didn't hit you. The, yeah, they didn't run at you in practice. Oh, Jerome, I appreciate you being here, man. Thank yeah. you, brother. I, I know we got a, we're running out of time, but I yes. do want to ask just one last question okay, before okay, okay. we land this, because we didn't talk a whole lot about the Super Bowl, but there is that moment at the, the end of the Super Bowl Mm. As of one, you're champions finally throughout your career Man. trying to get to that moment. Uh -huh. And you walk up and you hand him a game ball. That's right. Right. And there's this beautiful moment where you're like, I love you. Thank you for everything you've done in my career. Can you just, I don't want to say quickly, take your time. I mean, your time. Well, but I'll, you I'll just never talk about that moment. I'll never me? forget that moment because he sought me out. Um, but most importantly, prior to that, what nobody knows is every time we won a game, he gave me the game ball. Hmm. So we beat Cincinnati. He in the playoffs. Gave, yeah. In the playoffs, so he gave the me the ball. game ball. He gave me the ball. We beat Indy. He gave me the ball. Uh, we beat Denver. He gave me the ball. You know, and and he told me, he, you know, he prefaced it with, "Hey, hey, you got got another one." Out. And so when he won it, he mm. said, "I promised you, I would get you here." Mm. And so he gave me the ball, man. It was just the biggest. It was an incredible moment because. It was a culmination of of a promise made, mm -hmm. and and it was a promise kept, and so for him to kind of give me the ball, that was a it was a special moment because of obviously me being from Detroit, that was my last game, all of those things factoring in a year before the disappointment, and so all of that in that one moment, it was it was special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it that's was. that's what it I mean. Was. For me, it was just like that's what it, it felt like. I was it like, was, I, yeah. I told him, and I, was, I felt stupid for saying it. Like, but you come back, we gonna get your Super Bowl. Yeah, right. dumbest thing. Like, why would I say that? So stupid. <laughs> I'm but on record. Like, but it's like I feel like this is just my way of being. Like, no, yeah. I, I like I'm. I promise. I promise I'm you to do that. Something. Yeah. Whether it happened or not, but it just you know, it just it, you had you meant so much to me. Um, I'll never forget. I tell this story all the time. When I, you know, people ask like, what kind of a guy you are, or whatever. I remember the first day I walked into that, into the, to the Steelers South Side. I had my, I'm carrying like my playbook, my book, like all this of a, of, and I have a, a, not three ring binder, but like a spiral notebook. And I got a whole both stuff, and I see Bus walk out for the first time. And I'm just like, like holy cow, like that's Jerome, like. <laughs> and he just, he just comes right up to me, and he, and I, I can't even. He's like, what's up, young buck? How you doing? Whatever. Like, good to have you here. Just, you know, kind of Kevin, and he, he. Takes my the top the, the very first page of the of the spiral like he opens it, and on it he wrote he wrote Jerome and he wrote his phone number, and he said if there's anything you I I, I wish I, I it's something went something like this anything you ever want I've done anything you ever bought I've already bought anything you ever want to do I've already done it call me if you ever need anything, and I was just mm -hmm. like. I'm not calling him. <laughs> Zero <laughs> chance I'm calling him. <laughs> Zero chance. Um, but I, I, I know how it is because I do that. And, and he told me, he said, enjoy like, enjoy this thing because it's going to go really fast. And I remember thinking to myself, like, okay, whatever, like no way. And I end up finding myself doing the same thing. To, I, you know, when I was telling guys the same thing, like 
hey, here's my number. Call me. They barely ever call. Yeah, yeah, they but, really, really but, ever call. But you. you give them the number, and I say, and I tell them all the time, like, hey, it seems like just the other day, Jerome was doing the same thing to me, wow. telling me how fast it was going to go, and it sure did. Wow. I yep. said, so enjoy yep. every every minute of it because yep. it does go by so fast. I mean, eight, 18 years. You did 13? 13. 13. Yeah. I mean, yeah. wow. that's a, that's an eternity, but a it goes time. by yeah. so fast. And it so, does. Um, that's it, why those young guys, yeah. you've got to tell them to appreciate speaking it. Speaking of that, speaking of that, mm -hmm. I'll never forget when I retired, it's a very awkward place that you're in because you know you're all the guys, but you're no longer in the locker room, mm -hmm. right? And so I, it was something I, I'll never forget. We at, we're at the, uh, the restaurant down where we used to the, the team used to stay used to be the fish market or whatever oh yeah yeah Remember we used to be um, yeah, well, yeah. anyway some kind of way we there we there and and i'm i'm retired he's still playing and, and something and he's he he mad at me because i said something right and i don't really remember you know you say shit you yeah I'm, it's television when you're on I'm the doing this he was the yeah, media, it's the media. I'm, media. Doing, I'm telling you i'm saying something i said something i don't remember what it was right he maybe threw an interception or something and i said something hey, he threw this. anyway so he was he got in his oh, back pocket boy. right he got it in his back pocket right so <laughs> he, he he hit me with it like real slick like yeah but whatever whatever right and i'm like what do, you, what do you mean right and so and so it was like Damn, I was, you know, it's my job. I'm just talking here like I'm, I'm, and, and my thing is, I always, my philosophy was criticize the play, not the player. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was always my philosophy. You should criticize say that again play, for the broadcasters that are Criticize <laughs> the play, not the player, right? Yeah. Because we got a personal relationship. So I'm not going to ever criticize the player because I know who the player is. Like, he ain't trying to throw an interception. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. So, he was he's he's bad. So when he retired, he said something to Cam Hayward. Then he came up with like he it was something like he wasn't even trying to say nothing great. But then he came up with like and cut his head off. And I was like this, yes, <laughs> yes. See, he got on me when I wasn't. Yeah. And see, he see now you know. So I just want to bring up to you like now you know. <laughs> see, because when you in it, it's like. I'm retired. I ain't trying to. I'm not trying to do that, right? Uh, but you in an awkward place because we're still friends. But you're playing. I'm retired, and it's the same situation. You retired. They still playing. And you're like, I ain't uh, trying to bash on the guys. Just, and and they everything you say they want to use against you, mm -hmm. right? So you can't. You find yourself not being able to speak about the Steelers because if you say anything. It's used against you. So, they love this show. So, yeah. yeah. They, they come after us so, on the show. So, so I am happy. <laughs> I was so, I was smiling. I said, I can't wait to talk to him about that. Because he hammered me back in the day. And I was just like, ah. uh, I like that though. Criticize yeah. the player. Uh, the, play, the play, not the player. Not I the like player, that. That's right? Good. And so yep. it was it, I I love to love to love to see you get a taste. And your own medicine. Yeah, you know? you're like, you weren't trying to do say nothing crazy. Like, yeah. And then you're like, oh, God. Yeah, this show is barely the media, but right. it ends up there a Now lot. I'm in the <laughs> firestorm. It's like, for what? I, I'm not trying to. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, I, it's fun. And I don't want to be, and you don't want to be distracting. Mm -hmm. in a, you know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> <laughs> Round of applause. Mr. Media. <laughs> Well, Jerome, I, take your cookies and go home. <laughs> take, your cookies. take your cookies and go home. Thank you so much uh, for being here. This has been amazing. Um, we know that you, uh, you you have other things to tend to. I think you're probably late for something right now. I mean, right. I think Ashley's going to take it. Okay. So. No, he's late being dad. Going, he's yeah, got to be he's dad. Gonna go be dad. I yeah, I get it. Up. See, see, all the things that he's doing, I've done. So I, I know exactly. Should have called, called him. I should have called him. I'm telling you, I'm 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 ahead of him. So. He got to be dad, and 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 what the what the kids don't realize is they don't care about what you used to do, what you do. I, I got dad, I got to get to practice. You got to get me here. You gonna be there? What you got to do? You know all of that. You gonna get it? And so, Super Bowls you have? I need to get what? I care nothing about that. You better be there. Yeah, I know. And so I know. that's it. Soccer, all that stuff. You got to be there.
Yeah, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> well, brother, thanks for having me on, no, man. thanks for being here, man. It really thank it means a thank lot you, thank to you, thank you, thank you. us, the fans, I mean, to, to reminisce and tell stories. It's great. And you're the best. I, I, tell you the, I tell the truth when I say that you were a role model and inspiration to me. I mean, they were literally, this is no joke. Remember those WWJD bracelets? Yep. What would Jesus do? They were no joke. When I first, they came out like early on, um, when, you know, they're relatively new when I was uh -huh. playing young. And I remember thinking like when I was going through um, like in football and thinking about things, I'd be like, what would Jerome do? Mm. Like seriously, like I, I seriously thought about things like how would Jerome handle this? Because such a consummate professional in terms of dealing with teammates, media, people, things like that, fans. Um, not that you were always like, you said yes to everything, but you were, you were so graceful in your nose. And I, th I thought that was just such a, uh, it's such a hard thing to do, but you were so graceful mm -hmm. at it. And so I just, I thank you for your friendship. Um, I love I, golfing with you. I wish you could play I'll more. I'll never forget one, just one little piece, a nugget that I gave you that um, I saw you incorporate in what you did. And I, I said, as a leader, you got to give yourself to every piece of the team. You can't just be a leader to this these guys you got to be a leader to all the guys right and so i saw you have it ha starting to do that right as as you progressed right and and so me being looking at afar being able to see the things that that you were doing uh it just it wore my heart because mm -hmm. you see a young guy developing into the leader of mm -hmm. of the organization of the team and you feel good that you kind of did the right thing, so now he see he saw the right thing. But in in those quiet moments when you get a chance to talk, that you can you can impart a little bit of wisdom that he can take, put in his back pocket, and then he can pay it forward, right? right to the guys, you know, the guys that that are now there, uh, and use him as that barometer. Mm. And that's that's mm -hmm. that's what it's always about. Yep. Well, I appreciate you. No Very problem, much. brother. Yeah. Yeah. Well. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. We are grateful for your time. Like we had said uh, about the cookbook, I'll let you guys know that's going to be available next week. Stay tuned. Stay plugged into social channels. That's at Football with Ben on Instagram. Uh, and to find out when that actually drops. Jerome, is there anything you'd like to plug real quick? Any... Uh, thing you're doing. I know you're filming your show right now. Uh, yeah. Film my show. Where can we watch um, that at? Yeah, that's um, that's on um, uh, WPXI. Look at I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's uh, 9.30 uh, in the morning, Saturdays, and it and it shows again at 1 a.m. Uh, mm -hmm. in the morning on Sundays, and you can get me on all the social channels, John Bettis at all the, all the good stuff. Right on. I'll find that and link it below in the description. We appreciate you guys, and we will be here back in just a couple days to uh, cover week three. Yeah. Oh. All right. Thanks, Bucks. Appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you.